about the skateboarding, guitar playing teenager who traveled back in time in order to change his family's future? If so, you probably left that movie thinking, man, how awesome would that be? And as you flip through your mental yearbook, how many hairstyles would you maybe not have worn? What crowd would you have avoided and how much harder would you actually have studied? And I don't even want to get you started thinking about girls. Personally, when I think back over life, I wonder if I should have ever dated at all as a teenager. Maybe I should have wrestled my senior year and I sometimes wonder what life would be like now if I knew back then that I would someday be a pastor. If you're thinking better late than never, then you're right. Because at the end of our lives, it doesn't matter how long we linger in our destiny. What's most important is that we reach it. I want to encourage those of you who may have given up on your dream. I want to speak to the person who thinks you're too far from the top to ever reach the marker, too busy with life to chase that one purpose. I want to share with you something Jesus said about life that has been perhaps overlooked or misunderstood for far too long. Then I'm going to take you through some practical steps to make what Jesus said a reality in your life. Let's begin with looking at a conversation Jesus had with his disciples about the future for those who believe. It's found in John chapter 14, verse 12, where Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Okay, so let's unpack this line by line. Jesus tells his disciples, whoever believes in him. That phrase is not limited to the men who were in the room. If it were, he could have just said, you guys who believe in me. It would seem to me then that Jesus was talking to them about you. So he says, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. What are the works that Jesus was doing? Well, according to Luke chapter 4, verse 18, they include proclaiming the good news to the poor, freedom for the prisoners, recovering sight for the blind, setting the oppressed free, and proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. But those who believe in him are supposed to do even greater works than that. What does that have to do with him doing whatever we ask in his name? Everything. When Luke wrote the word name in that verse, he used the Greek word anima, which denotes the character, the nature, and the reputation of someone. It's different than name as in nomenclature. You see, just because you know the nomenclature of Jesus doesn't mean you know his anima, his character, his nature, and his reputation. Just as the itinerant Jewish exorcist and the sons of Sceva who tried to cast out devils using the nomenclature of the very Jesus they didn't believe in. Luke tells us what happened in Acts chapter 19, verse 13 through 16. It says, Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits, trying to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed, they would say, In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, the Jewish chief priests, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. So how do I know what God wants for my life? How do I set goals that match the character, the nature, and the reputation of Jesus? The first clue is found in the very words of Jesus that we read moments ago. I'll reiterate it this way. You know that your prayers will be answered when your requests involve proclaiming good news to the poor, physically and spiritually, freeing prisoners, which implies mercy and forgiveness, providing healing mentally, physically, economically, and of course spiritually, that results in the improvement in the lives of those less fortunate and finally, proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor, a time of celebration from debt and bondage. This is a message to humanity that God has done something marvelous by sending Jesus to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. 
what Jesus did for us can be simply described as securing a future that has better than any plan we could come up with on our own. So when I plan my future, it is in conjunction with prayer. My question to God is, what do you want me to do? How can I make a difference in someone's life? What need or what needs can I meet? The answer to those questions will guide your career choices, your family's direction, and your level of ministry involvement. Maybe I should say it this way. Your success is contingent upon your ability and your willingness to meet needs. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Denzel Washington, Harley and the Davidsons, Dr. Mark Hardacre, and many people in this room have found their greatest success, be it monetary, emotionally, or spiritually, by understanding the needs in their community that they were able to meet. And in short, God's desire for you is that you find success in meeting a need. Now, before you go on quoting Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, where Jesus says, do not worry about your life, be sure to read that entire chapter because by the time you get to verse 33, you'll find out that what I'm saying to you is very biblical. Here's what Jesus says in that verse. But seek first, not only, just first, Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things, what things? What you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear, you can add, drive, and live in if you want to. But he says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well, meaning in addition to the kingdom stuff. So what's the kingdom and righteousness we should be seeking? Well, we talked about that already when Jesus told us why he was anointed. So here's how I look at it. I make a list of all the needs I would like to meet five years from now. Then I take it to the Lord and say, God, do these desires match your plan for my life? I want a house large enough to host small group meetings so that I can make disciples. I want to make enough money so that I can pay tithes and give generously to the church without my own home lacking or suffering. I want a strong, healthy marriage so that I can inspire others who are going through tough times. I want them to know that they can make it, that they don't have to call it quits. I want to have a successful business that sets me up to give jobs to felons who otherwise wouldn't be able to find work. I want to be an active member in a church that has focused on preaching the love of Jesus to a dying world. Lord, is this what you want from me? Then God looks at my list and says, yep, that's part of my plan, except it won't be in that state. And you heard me clear on this one. Now, this is definitely what I see in your future. You'll make this kind of money, just not in that career. And this requires us to be both focused and flexible. We have to be focused enough to say no to opportunities that distract us from our end goals. But we have to be flexible enough to say yes to assignments or things that we may not enjoy, but will get us to our destiny. Buying that house right now may keep you in a job God never intended for you to work. That time on the golf course may be better spent working on your business plan this weekend. This is about setting priorities and committing to those priorities. We all have time, we all have money, and we all have energy for what we deem important. Make kingdom work the priority, and according to Jesus, personal success will come as a byproduct. As we plan our futures, there's three things that we must do to greatly increase our chances for success. So let's go back to John and find out what they are. Jesus says, very truly I tell you, number one, whoever believes in me will, number two, do the works I've been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may, number three, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So as you plan your future, ask yourself, 
What will I do within the next five years that will meet a need in my community? What needs to be in place three years from now to make that a reality? A year from now, I need to have what accomplished in order to meet my three-year goal. What do I need to have done within the next six months to set the framework for my goal? What should I get started on this week to set this baby in motion? Listen, God has a plan for your life. And he wants you to be in agreement with his plan for your life. So pray, ask God to reveal to you what he sent you here to do. Because you are on assignment.